Welcome back to our empowerment lesson. And in today's program, we're talking about accepting your value as a person. In psychology, the term self-esteem is used to describe a person's overall sense of self-worth, self-respect, and self-value. Self-esteem is often seen as a permanently personality trait because it means that tends to be stable and enduring. Self-esteem can be involved, can involve a multiplicity of belief about the self, such as judgment of how you look, your belief system, your emotions, and your behavior. The need for self-esteem plays an important role in psychology. psychology. The psychologist Abraham Maslow described self-esteem as one of the basic human motivation. Maslow suggested that people need both esteem from other people as well as inner self-respect. Both of these needs must be fulfilled in order for an individual to grow as a person and achieve self-actualization. Here are some factors that can influence your self-esteem. Genetic factors can play a role, but it is often our experience that forms the basis for an overall self-esteem. Those who consistently receive critical negative assessment from parents, caregivers, family members, and friends will experience problems with low self-esteem. Factor number two, low self-esteem affects every part of your life, including your relationships, your job, and your health. The good news is that you can raise your self-esteem even if you are an adult who has been harboring a negative self-image since childhood. You can think your way to failure or you can think your way to success. To make the paradigm shift, you have to be willing to replace negative thoughts with positive ones. You need to identify troubling situations. That means when you find yourself in situations that people are very negative, you get out of there. Second, become aware of your self-talk. What you tell yourself about the situation, your interpretation of that situation, and your emotional reaction. Factor number three, be aware when your thoughts turn negative. Negative thoughts and belief about something or someone can trigger responses such as muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, feeling dep depressed, angry, sad, nervous, guilty, or worrying. Or sometimes you find yourself eating and you're not hungry, or procrastination, procrastinating, or spending a, 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 a huge amount of time alone, obsessing about a situation, or blaming others for your problems. Factor number four, test, test the truthfulness of your thoughts. You may not easily recognize your negative thinking because you are used to it. You think that's normal. 
Well, here, let me give you some red flags and how to identify those negative thoughts when they're coming in. You always see things either bad, everything is bad, or everything is good. Or you see only the negative and you dwell on them. Another red flag will be you reject your achievement and other positive experiences by insisting that they don't count. They have no value. Another red flag will be you reach a negative conclusion with no evidence. For example, my friend hasn't replied my email. Therefore, I should have, I should have, she's probably angry at me. Another way is that you confuse feelings with facts. Like for, in, for instance, I feel like a failure, therefore I am a failure. Because you feel that way, a feeling is not the truth. Another factor will be that you undervalue yourself by using sarcasm and negative humor, de deprecating yourself. Factor number five, change your thoughts and belief. This allows you to feel construct or to create constructive ways that to cope with your self-esteem. That way, uh, what happens is you will boost your self-esteem by, um, by implementing changing the negative into the positive. Here are a few points that I want you to remember. Point number one, treat yourself with kindness and encouragement. Focus on the positive. Think about the good parts of your life. Count your blessings. Give yourself credit for making positive changes. Achieving a balanced, accurate view of yourself and accepting your value, your self-worth as a person, it will help you to feel happier, more confident, and really willing to do and be all the things that you're supposed to be and to do with your life. Because you never give up, you always feel that sense of urgency, that sense of purpose, that sense of motivation, because you feel good about yourself, because you got your self-esteem, you got your self-worth, and your personal value. You embrace those three qualities, and you have it made. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back.